Now that we've seen how you can filter over slots, we're in a good position to try and figure out which of the correct slots we should render for the content. We only want to render one content, and that's going to be the one matching up to the current tab ID. So instead of using filter, we're going to be using find. Before I proceed, I'm going to make a very small little refactor, and that's just making a variable for this particular uh, default slots in here, just because I think I'm going to be using this a lot more, and typing slots is a lot easier than typing this.slots.default. So now that we have that, what we're going to do is check over each of these slots and see if we can figure out which of the current content we're on and then match it up. To do this, I'm going to use find. I'm going to create a new variable called content and that's going to be slots.find. Let's just go ahead and do a console login here and see what we're working with. And that's going to give us some options to see if we can match everything up correctly. If I refresh the page, we're going to have six logs. Of course, this does make sense. We're passing in six children, three tabs and three contents. If we have a look down the bottom, we can see this one is a tab content. And we also have the props up here with a tab ID of three. So this is how we're going to match everything up. We need to figure out the active tab as well. We actually do have that. We're going to be passing it here using vmodel active tab ID. So I'm going to have to go ahead and declare that prop here. Let's do that now. It's going to be called active tab ID. In this case, it's just going to be a type of string and we're going to say that it is required. So I'm going to make a requirement. You always have to have a tab active. You probably would like to have a bit more flexibility in a more reusable library, but I think this is going to be fine for now. The next thing we're going to do is match up that active tab ID prop against the prop down here. And that should get us the correct content. So instead of doing this console log, what we're going to do is return in here if x.props.tabid is triple equal to that correct prop, which is going to be this dot active tab ID. Because this is going to be just one function, I'm just going to delete these and use the implicit return. I think that makes it a little bit more readable. And I'm also going to change the name of X. I don't think X is a good name here. I'm going to change this one to be, let's call it slot instead. I think that's a little bit more readable. Let's go ahead and do a console log on content just to see if we've got everything working correctly. And I do expect this one is going to work. You can see we're getting one log down here. It is tab ID of one. And that is what I expected because I have set active tab ID to be one over here. So the next step is going to be rendering this. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to be using a fragment here, which is where there's no root node. So I'm going to turn this one into an array. And then we should be able to do something like this. I'm going to pass in H, I'm going to put a div around it and then just render my content. Let's save it off and see what happens. With a bit of luck, this is going to work correctly and it is working correctly. We're showing a tab ID of one here and that's actually incorrect. But what I was expecting was going to be content one. And the problem is we're matching up against the tab ID here and we actually have two tab IDs of one. The first is up here and the second is down here. So what we need to do is make sure the correct component is being matched as well. So I'm going to do an and in here and then we're just going to say if slot.type is triple equal to uh, tab content and that's going to make sure we get the correct component. Let's save it off and try again. If I refresh the page, you can see everything is now working correctly. Let's just go ahead and verify that. I'm going to make this one to be active tab of three. And if we save that off, it is going to update correctly. And we can see it's working the same for two and back to one. So everything is now working correctly. In the next lecture, we're going to see how we can get some more dynamic styling and then also have a listener on these tabs. So when I click on this, it's going to correctly update the content.